This video is presented by EA Game Changers and a massive thanks to them for allowing me to take part in an Anthem Early Access Capture event. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I'm going to try and help you decide what Jalvin to use in the wide open world of Bastion in Anthem. But before we get into the video guys, I'm giving away a few full copies of Anthem the game. To be with a chance of winning it, simply make sure you are subbed to this channel, drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. More details within the video description. If you guys have already pre-ordered the game but would still like to show your support, you can by hitting that like button. And if you are new around here and Anthem videos are what you want to see, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so I've played a good 9 or 10 hours of the full game. I've experienced every single javelin, learned about each and what each offers. Today I bring you the goods and the bads of each, the positives and the negatives, which hopefully will help you decide which javelin to pick when the game drops on February 22nd. There are four javelins to choose from, the Ranger, Colossus, Interceptor and Storm. Each 100% offers something the other three don't, and playing with each, the difference is truly there. There is a play type for everybody, that is for sure. So let's start with the Ranger. So a little information on the Ranger Javelin suit. Commonly used by frontline fighters, this reliable javelin has well-rounded offensive and defensive capabilities due to an even balance of armor and speed. The Ranger's propulsion pack can launch quick airstrikes on unsuspecting foes, as well as navigate challenging terrain during exploration. Piloted by both freelancers and sentinels, this iconic suit's versatility is what makes it deadly. With strong offensive capabilities, respectable defense and something in its arsenal for every situation. The Ranger is the jack of all trades for your squad's needs. Now the Ranger's focus is versatility. Offensive style is single target. Its defensive move is dash. Its jump type is a double jump and its play style is a soldier. Now I used the Ranger for a good few hours and to be honest was really getting used to its style of play. Now compared to other javelins it does lack in some areas but definitely makes up in others. The Ranger's special ability or special move is known as the multi-target missile battery and in my opinion this ultimate was by far my favourite out of the four I used. It just reminds me so much of the Iron Man shoulder mounted no Fs given all out getting my way and you are going down destruction. Now with the Ranger, I know many people are thinking, well we understand and know it's an all round javelin suit, it's the average Joe a lot, it's the standard outfit, it's like I said the jack of all trades, who would want to use this when you can use a tank like javelin with the Colossus, striking lightning upon your foes with the storm or being a stealthy ninja with the interceptor. I actually think the Ranger will win the hearts of many many people and to be honest it's a great javelin and I honestly preferred and enjoyed using it more so than other javelins. It offers loads of abilities too, let's check them out. It has a grenade which can be upgraded, it has a frag grenade, blast everything in a large area with massive damage. Inferno grenade, set your enemies on fire dealing immediate and continuous damage. Frost grenade, freeze your opponents in place. Secret Grenade, a lava grenade that splits into multiple enemy seeking missiles. And Sticky Grenade, hit an adversary with a grenade that latches onto them, dealing damage with extreme prejudice. The grenade is binded to the left bumper. The right bumper ability is called the Assault Launcher. You start off with, I believe, the seeking missile. Fire a projectile that seeks out a single target and others immediately around them. This can be upgraded though, let's check out a few others. Pulse Blast. Blast a single target with a massive energy burst. We have Spark Beam. Unleash a beam of energy that does continuous damage to anything it touches. Venom Dart. Inflict burning acid damage in a volley of darts. And Blast a Missile. Clear a field with a missile that damages a huge area around the point of impact. Pretty damn sweet. And then it has its support gear which binds to both bumpers being pressed together. Bulwark Point. Keep enemies out of your bubble with a vehicle shield that protects your squad. And then we have Muster Point. Cover your teammates with a vehicle shield that increases weapon damage. Epic! So the Ranger, the average Joe, the Jack of all trades. Will this be the javelin you take into the world of Bastion? So let's move on to the Storm. So the Storm is the latest javelin design, using ember cord seals to harness the power of the elements. 
Its ability to float above combat compensates for its light armor. Operated by a skilled lancer, the javelin's lightning, ice, and other elemental attacks make it an invulnerable tool against the minion. The storm channels the raw energy of the anthem through its seals to hover over the battlefield and dish out damage. With its powerful seals and minimal armor, the storm is a tempestuous javelin that can challenge the skills of even a veteran lancer. Its focus is fire power, offensive style is area of effect, its defense move is being able to blink and teleport. Its jump type is a hover and its playstyle is glass cannoned. The storm for me was probably the only one I most looked forward to using and when I got my hands on it I wasn't disappointed. The difference between the ranger and the storm is night and day, saying that though people, some people prefer the night while others prefer daylight. Now the storm I will state was the last javelin I unlocked and instantly said to myself this is the one Bioware has spent the most time on, not in the sense of it felt OP, because it doesn't, but in its level of design, from the way it moves with its teleporting and blinks, and the way it casts those elemental abilities and even to the design of it itself. I think we all can agree when I say this looks the best by far. It does look incredible and seeing some of the armors you can unlock and customize along the way, we will see some amazing storms on the battlefield. The player style for me with the storm felt more so of a defensive type javelin suit, therefore more so defensive than the ranger. Its ability moves allow you to attack from a distance, its mid-air blinks allow for great maneuverability and the fact you can hover above the battlefield and rain down that terror was super super fun doing so. I was smiling for the whole ride. Now the footage you are seeing is just basic footage of the storm. I have footage to share with you guys coming soon which you will not want to miss, some great great end game high level action. So let's check out some of the storm's abilities. The ability which binds to left bumper is blast seals. You start off with lightning strike I believe, a target strike that deals lightning damage in an area. Ice storm places targeted fields of ice that explode with frost damage and freeze enemies. Flame blast a quick explosion that deals fire damage at a target location. Ice blast hurls huge chunks of ice that deals massive damage force and freezes enemies in close range and living flame a burst of flame energy that seeks out and ignites targets so wheat the right bumper ability is focus seals first up frost shards rapid fire shards of ice that slowly freeze a target in place burning orb a versatile fire ability that can be fired quickly in small shots or charge for a larger projectile that explodes. Shock burst, a discharge of electric that can be bounced off walls to reach targets behind cover. Glacial spear, fires a beam of powerful ice energy in a target direction and then we have ice blast, unleashes a bolt of lightning that will leap to nearby enemies for heavy damage. How epic does each and every one of those sound? The storm also has support seals which binds to both bumpers being pressed at the same time. Wind wall creates a translucent wall that will block enemy projectiles and quickening field. Creates a field that reduces cooldown on abilities for allies who enter. Epicness. The storm's ultimate ability is called elemental storm. Calling down a torrent of energy, the storm decimates a targeted area and any foes unlucky enough to be standing in it. And let me tell you people, it's the closest you will ever get to being 4, that is for sure. So yeah guys, that is the Storm, already a fan favourite and I believe will probably be the most used javelin. So let's move on to the Interceptor. Created as a scout suit for explorative and diplomatic missions, the Interceptor is the most agile and acrobatic javelin a Lancer can find. Lightning fast, close range attacks combined with specialized weaponry will thrill lancers who crave speed on the battlefield. The interceptor excels in getting close to deal damage to enemies then dashing away before they can react. Unleashing lightning fast maneuverability to pull off powerful offensive abilities, the interceptor makes the impossible look easy. Its focus is agility, offensive style is single target, offensive move is triple dash. Jump type is a triple jump and play style is fast and precise. So I'm going to straight up tell you guys from the get go, the interceptor is my baby. The play style required to make the most out of this javelin is me through and through. 
I loved every second I got using this thing, and to be honest, when I played the full game at the capture event, 50% of my time was taken up using the interceptor. Its ability to get in and out, slash and dash, jump and flip is just absolutely epic. Although the interceptor definitely doesn't hit the hardest, if used correctly, I feel it can be the most deadly, that is for sure. So the interceptor's abilities, we have assault systems. Searching Glaive, throws out a homing glaive. Venom Bomb, tosses a grenade, which hits all nearby enemies with acid. Cryo Glaive, locks onto up to two nearby enemies or targets and freezes on impact. Cluster Mines, throws out a group of mines onto a target area and spark dash. Dashes forward, leaving behind a damaging trail of electricity. Then we have people eat strike systems. We have detonating strike, a melee strike that charges an enemy with electric energy. If killed while well charged, the enemy will explode, dealing damage around them. Plasma Star tosses a plasma empowered shuriken at a single target, effective at long range. Wraith Strike sends out a projection of the interceptor to attack enemies. How epic does that sound? Then we have Tempest Strike a melee strike that deals high physical damage and then we have venom spray spray is a corrosive acid that damages all enemies hit and then people we have its support systems target beacon marks an enemy allowing allies to do increased damage to them and then we have rally cry clears harmful status effects from the entire team the interceptor ultimate is a blade dancer type super wielding blades of mayhem and causing all kinds of damage to anyone nearby i absolutely love it so yeah people that is the interceptor this is 100 my javelin of choice going into the game and i cannot wait to play more so when the full game drops okay so last up people we have the colossus the beast the unit the effing tank so the colossus this heavily armored javelin is a cornerstone of human society and is used in various occupations including industrial work, deep sea diving, and heavy transport. Though slower than other models, this javelin can withstand a punishing amount of damage. In battle, you can count on the Colossus to hold the line and disperse threats with its tremendous strength in close combat. If you think subtlety is overrated and want enough artillery to take out a small army, unleash the pure devastation of this hulking war machine. While each javelin can equip two weapons, the Colossus is the only javelin sturdy enough to wield any of the heavy weapons. Its focus is resistance, offensive style is moving target, defense type, shield, jump type, rocket and playstyle, heavy in tank. So the Colossus at the capture event I use for roughly about two hours tops. Upon first using it, I changed from the interceptor and the difference felt absolutely ridiculous. Going from the fastest javelin in the game to by far the slowest didn't feel great at all. Not if you are a fan of that increased agility and maneuverability. The Colossus is for sure though one sluggish big old tank of a javelin. But what this thing lacks in getting around quick is the ability to just tank damage and cause all kinds of warfare. One thing I noticed which I feel this game does a much better job than any of its competitors is the fact playable characters or in this case javelins do and play as supposed instead of having a tanky titan which has by far the most defense which then somehow has the best maneuverability. Within Anthem you pay the price for using such a tank but in saying that like I said the destruction this thing can do is all out epicness. I definitely feel people will fall for this javelin. I can actually see it being the second most used behind the storm. And the fact it's the only javelin capable of wielding heavy weapons means it has its own unique set of arsenal you won't see on other javelin suits. So let's check out the Colossus's abilities. We have Assault Gear Ordnance Launcher, High Explosive Mortar, bomb anything in your way with an explosive projectile that deals heavy damage to a small area. Burst Mortar, launch a volley of mini mortars to blast everything in a huge area. Firewall Mortar, light the battlefield on fire with a huge wall of flame. Lightning Coil, give your enemies a shock with an arc of electricity that targets a random enemy. And Shock Coil, hit every target around you with waves of electricity. The Colossus then has the Assault Gear Heavy Assault Launchers. First up, Siege Artillery, equip this classic and hit your enemies with a hefty rocket. Flamethrower, turn up the heat with a continuous blast of pure fire. Flat Cannon, put your enemies down with a short range scatter shot blast. The Railgun, 
hit one enemy hard with this destructive kinetic projectile. And then we have Venom Splitter. Unleash multiple arching shots of acid down on your enemies. And then we have its support gear abilities, Battle Cry. Incite enemies to attack you while lowering their elemental and physical resistance. Basically baiting those bastards, absolutely awesome. And then we have Shield Pulse, give your friends a damage resistance buff, nice. The Colossus's ultimate allows you to wield some big old filthy grenade launcher type cannon which absolutely destroys, not lasting as long as other super abilities but for damn sure will do enough damage while you have to make up for that, wow. So yeah guys, the Colossus is the tank of the family, the Hulk of the group, the Drax of the Guardians, will this be your choice? And guys, that's it. That is all for javelins and what they offer. And my opinion on each. Which one will you be taking into the battlefield? Let me know down below in that comment section, guys. And on that note, we have unfortunately come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really does help out. If you are new around here and for videos of what you want to see, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one.